For the past 25 years, the Dallas Cowboys have cast giant shadows over the National Football League. Shadows shaped as much by style and substance as by victory. Tracing cowboy history is like charting the growth of a blue chip stock. It has been a steady rise marked by stability in the front office and on the field. This long line of silver and blue has produced a lineage of players who seem to hand down championships to one another like members of a family passing down clothes they had outgrown. And in their silver season, the Dallas Cowboys are a team whose future appears as bright as its past. The Cowboys joined the NFL in 1960, an expansion team formed in bits and pieces from the graveyards of other teams like Frankenstein's monster. They were the creation of Clint Merkison Jr. and Tex Schramm, and they were coached by Tom Landry. Shooting for the stars was just a dream. So for obvious reasons, their eyes were earthbound, not heavenly. The Cowboys played their first game against the Steelers. They fought hard but lost 35 to 28 and finished 1960 without a victory. On September 17, 1961, the Cowboys faced the Steelers again and won their first league victory, 27 to 24. From the beginning, the Cowboys isolated weakness, then exploited it. becoming quite evident that these gangly, awkward kids would soon grow into men to be reckoned with. For six years, the Cotton Bowl was a home of losers. The Cowboys were charming and entertaining hosts who threw a good party, but in the end, the place gets wrecked and everybody leaves with a headache. The turning point of the franchise came in 1965, when so many bitter defeats took its toll on Tom Landry. He just came in and his heart just opened up and he cried and, you know, tears came out and he got us all in there and he said, fellas, it's not your fault, it's my fault. And uh, he said, I don't know if I'll be with the Cowboys next year. Tremendously emotional experience for all of us, and that was the turning point, I think, of the Dallas Cowboys. From then on, the Cowboys have been in the playoffs all but one year. When things go tough, the team has the confidence that he will have whatever is necessary for uh, the team to win, and therefore they keep playing, whether it's in a single game or whether it's the season. They have the total confidence that in the end, they'll win. The Y man's breaking outside, see? There's no use to send him out. Yeah. Just tell him to slow box, see? All right. And that way you have no key for hotness. You call, for example, 57 pop, wing down and in, Same there thing. won't be a soul in there. OK. You know, when, you, when he breaks in, does that whistle have to dog him all the way? Landry always had the plan. And finally, in 1966, he had the men to carry it out. Behind players like Bullet Bob Hayes, the Cowboys blazed to their first winning season. The Cowboy defense was born with the selection of number 74, Bob Lilly, in 1961. And in 1966, it grew up and was called Doomsday. last, the Cowboys were a balanced team, one which captured its first Eastern Conference title and earned the right to play the powerful Green Bay Packers for the NFL Championship. With 
With a score 34 to 27 in favor of Vince Lombardi's Packers, this seesaw game was resolved on a fourth down play in the final minute. This heartbreaking loss was the first link in a chain of crushing defeats. None was more brutal than the 1967 title game in Frigid Green Bay, when another NFL championship was decided on the final play. Here are the Packers, third down, inches to go. Debater, 17 to 14, Cowboys out in front. Packers trying for the go-ahead score. Starr begins the count. Takes the snap. He's at the quarterback sneak and he's in for the touchdown. And the Green Bay Packers are going to be world champions. For four seasons, the Cowboys were sarcastically called next year's champion. A slur that stuck until 1970 when they defeated the San Francisco 49ers for their first NFL title. Feels. You can't imagine how it feels because you never been, you never suffered with us like we've suffered, you know, in those losses in the last four years. It's a great reward for these fellows who work so hard to get there. The Cowboys galloped into the 70s, a decade that saw them win more games and play in more Super Bowls than any team in pro football. In 1971, they left the Cotton Bowl for Texas Stadium a suitable house of champions. In this sparkling new facility, they won their second straight NFC title. And in New Orleans, their first world's championship against the Miami Dolphins in Super Bowl VI. Bob Lilly and the Doomsday defense chased the Dolphins out of the Sugar Bowl while Roger Starbuck, the game's most valuable player, directed the Cowboys to a decisive 24-3 victory. The Cowboys' assault on the summit of pro football began in 1960 with few footholds and many pitfalls. Now on January 16, 1972, they were finally kings of the mountain. While their reputation grew by winning, their mystique grew by how they won. It began in a 1972 playoff game against the 49ers, a game in which quarterback Roger Starbuck justly earned his reputation as the savior of lost causes. Replacing starter Craig Morton in the fourth quarter, Roger launched a furious rally. Billy Park's touchdown made the score 28-23, and with only 52 seconds left, Starbuck climaxed the comeback with a touchdown to Ron Sellers. Scoring 17 unanswered points, including two touchdowns within 90 seconds, the jubilant Cowboys fashioned a 30-28 victory. The game marked a string of hair-raising Starbuck-led comeback victories, including 23 fourth-quarter rallies, 16 of which occurred in the last two minutes or overtime. The most miraculous occurred in 1975, when the Cowboys trailed the Vikings 14 to 10 with 24 seconds remaining in a playoff game. Well, the Cowboys need a miracle, as we said. Second and 10, Cowboys from the 50. Again, Staubach has them in the shotgun formation. Roger takes the snap, pumps it once. He's going long, down the near sideline for Drew Pearson. Pearson makes the catch at the five, touchdown! Would you believe it?
It is fondly remembered in Dallas and around the country as the Hail Mary Pass. While the cowboy ship sailed smoothly, a siren song almost washed them up on the rocks. Well, the Redskin cowboy rivalry is intense because the cowboys had this division to themselves. They had a cakewalk every year. They won it every year, eight consecutive years. So we come in and we destroy their, uh, their power. We knocked them off. And anytime any club comes in and upsets your equilibrium, then uh, there's going to be a rivalry. George Allen never pulled his punches, and the Redskin cowboy rivalry was governed more by the law of the back alley than the NFL rule book. It was a hit and run rivalry, littered with more wrecks than the San Diego freeway. Allen's belief that the Cowboys could be beaten physically proved unfounded as Dallas won almost two-thirds of the game. The most bizarre sidelight of this rivalry was the four touchdowns scored by Cowboy defensive tackle Larry Cole, number 63. Kruzak has it, no blitz coming. He is hit, the ball is intercepted by Larry Cole. Here's the Cowboys defensive tackle with a touchdown. Larry Cole has done it again. 44 yards for the guy who has made a specialty of scoring against the Washington Redskins. Cole Bubber ends an 11 year drought. He hadn't scored against him. While Cole was an unlikely hero, quarterback Clint Longley was the unknown soldier. Longley, who did not play a down in 12 weeks, replaced Roger Starbuck in the third quarter of the 1974 Thanksgiving Day game against Washington. He passed for over 200 yards in less than a half, then won the game with less than a minute to play. drawn in bright colors was smudged by two Super Bowls painted black. The Cowboys lost twice to the Steelers, the cruelest coming in Super Bowl 13. Roger back to throw, has a man open in the end zone, caught, touchdown, drop, drop Jackie in the end zone, Jackie Smith all by himself. Oh, bless his heart, he's got to be the sickest man in America. He was so open. The Cowboys appeared in a record five Super Bowls in the 70s, and Super Bowl XII was aptly called Doomsday in the Dome. The Doomsday defense crushed the Denver Broncos, and the Cowboys cruised to a decisive 27-10 victory. Roger goes deep across the middle, way downfield, and Butch Johnson caught! Touchdown! A sensational diving catch by Butch Super Bowl XII was another exclamation point in a history punctuated by victory. From 1966 through the 1970s, the Cowboys enjoyed more victory than any other team in the NFL. But if years of excitement could be distilled, they would boil down to the last regular season game of 1979. A minute one left in the game. This is an all-timer. Cowboys at the Redskin 33, second down 10, trailing by six points. 
from the shotgun. Staubach has time, throws, caught, touchdown. I mean, you gotta love the Cowboys. They're the most exciting team in the NFL. They can pull it out. 42 seconds left in the game. Redskins lead by six. How do you how do you live like this? How can you live like this doing this every oh, week? This is what it's all about. This is a killer. Second down and eight. From the eight-yard line. No shotgun this time. Staubach throwing in the end zone. Tony Hill! The Cowboys vaulted into the playoffs for the 13th time in 14 years. But it was the last hurrah for Roger Starbuck in Texas State. The system uh, was successful before me. It's been successful in the 70s with me, and it'll be successful without me. Uh, the system is, is not impersonal at all when you hear the word system. It's a bunch of people that know what they're doing all the way from Clint down to Tex, who really runs the ball club. And, of course, the nuts and bolts of the Dallas Cowboys is... Uh... <coughs> a man that wears a funny hat on the sidelines. I wasn't going to do this, but uh, Tom Landry is the nuts and bolts, and I appreciate him. I appreciate my teammates through the years, because I'm one that's been successful in this system. It's been a lot of good ones. And there'll be many more good ones. But I, uh, <coughs> I thank the Cowboys and I'm retired. The king was dead. And many believed the kingdom would also perish. But in 1980, Prince Charming stepped into the cowboy huddle and wrote a fairy tale finish to a playoff game in Atlanta. Trailing 27 to 17 late in the fourth quarter, Danny White waved his magic wand and the Falcons disappeared. The Cowboys needed one more magic moment with 42 seconds remaining. Here come the Cowboys, still with 49 seconds to go. Ball at the 23, 27, 24. Danny White with one running back. Here comes the blitz again. Danny back to throw into the end zone. Caught! Touchdown! Drew Pearson, the Cowboys wide receiver. And Roger Staubach, who threw to Drew so many times, just turned around and said, I don't believe it. The succession from Staubach to White was complete, and the Cowboys ended the new decade as they had left the old one, winner. The sun never sets on the Dallas Cowboy empire. The lone star is emblazoned across the United States, the symbol of the team America took to its heart. Cowboys are constructed on equal measures of mystique and might. Their image is laced with glamour, flashy as Michael Jackson's sequin glove. But there is substance in their style. The Cowboys possess a fighting spirit and a philosophy that does not accept second best. On the road, the Cowboys never travel alone. They are the most popular team in pro football. They are the most imitated team in pro football. 
the sincerest form of flattery. They appear on national television more than any other team, with ratings that rival the Ewings of Southport. There is no middle ground on where people stand on the Dallas Cowboys. But love them or hate them, people come to see. What foes get is not necessarily what they want. An offense that is a flash dance of razzle-dazzle where the quickest path to six points is not necessarily a straight line. This innovative and futuristic offense has borrowed from its past. The spread formation was employed by the Cowboys in the early 60s, more as a surprise play than as a staple of their attack. In the mid-70s, they dusted it off, tinkered with it, renamed it, and outburst touchdowns from both barrels of the shotgun. An inventive offense fit hand in glove with a creative defense. The Cowboys pioneered a unique formation called the Flex. It has been the bread and butter of a defense that beat the stuffing out of their opponents, and Doomsday became a unit worth cheering about. Let's go, Harvey! Come on, D! The Cowboys have always been fierce and physical, but they always played defense with their heads first and their bodies second. From their inception, the Cowboys developed a core of intelligent players at linebacker, a position that has traditionally been manned by men swift and mobile. Chuck Howley, number 54, an all-pro and Super Bowl MVP unraveled plays before they were stitched together. No one stood his ground at the collision point better than Leroy Jordan, number 55. Bob Brunick, number 53, took over from Jordan and became a Pro Bowl player. This tradition of excellence extended to the last line of defense the secondary, a unit whose first superstar was Mel Renfro, number 20. Renfro, the Cowboys' all-time leading interceptor and all-pro Cornell Green were the cornerstones of Doomsday in the mid-60s and early 70s. The next generation was headed by all-pro safeties, Cliff Harris, number 43, and Charlie Waters, number 41. The present and future resides in free agent to all pro sensation, Everson Walls, number 24. 
the anchor of Doomsday has always been the defensive line. Here, faces change, but the results remain the same. At this position, the Cowboys reload, not rebuild. And from Bob Lilly to Randy White, one All-Pro has followed another on the front four. George Andre was an imposing defensive end, but he played in the shadow of Bob Lilly number 74. Mr. Cowboy was an All-Pro 11 times and the Cowboys' first Hall of Fame. The most ferocious pass rusher was Harvey Martin. Number 79 led the Cowboys in sacks for an amazing 10 straight years. Martin could freelance because six foot nine Ed Too Tall Jones took care of the run. Randy White was single blocked as a rookie in 1975. That folly induced double, then triple teams. But like the postman, nothing kept the manster from his appointed round. Perhaps one play captured White's essence. In 1980, after his initial pass rush, Number 54 doubled back to track down Scott Fitzke, the Eagles' fastest player. Randy White is a hunter, and teammates made a career scavenging the remains of his hits. The success of the Doomsday defense has always been predicated on players who outthought as well as outhit their opponents. This has also been a premium with a complex cowboy offense, where linemen have tended to be tall, maneuverable, and smart. In a world of push and shove, cowboy linemen clear the field like bulldozers. Tackle Ralph Neely, number 73, launched a fleet of all pros that included John Nylon, Rayfield Wright, Blaine Nye, Herbert Scott, and Pat Donovan. Players who every season were the ground floor for one of the highest scoring attacks in pro football. The Cowboys have been blessed at quarterback throughout their history. Passes whose yardage stretched from sea to shining sea. The succession of superior passer-receiver combinations began with Don Meredith and Bob Hayes. They produced the longest pass play in Cowboy history, a 95-yard touchdown in 1966. Roger Starbuck to Drew Pearson, coupled captain comeback with the team's all-time leading receiver. Danny White to Tony Hill ushered in a new era that threatened to break all existing records. At tight end, the standard of excellence was set by number 89, Billy Joe Dupree and maintained by the heir to his position, Doug Cosby. There was a royal succession at running back that began with Don Perkins. Perkins, running almost exclusively inside, gained over 6,000 yards. His successor was Gutty Walt Garrison, one of the most punishing runners of his time. As Perkins begat Garrison, Garrison begat Robert Newhouse, 
a player who used his body like the business end of a torpedo. The legend of the long distance runners started with Calvin Hill, a surprise number one draft choice who ran from Yale to Rookie of the Year in 1969. The career of 1970's number one draft choice, Dwayne Thomas, was meteoric. After a short, brilliant flight came a sharp, sudden descent. One rocket ship that has blazed dead on course is Tony Dorsett, a player who ascended to the stars in his first season. The handoff goes to Dorsett, dances into the secondary, and heads left. The 30 comes right. First down, 10, pitch out, Dorsett coming left. He's out to the 30, breaks to the right, 35, 40. Still on his feet at the 50, one more block, he might go. He's at the 30, he's being chased at the 20, the 15, the 10. Touchdown, Cowboys! A 75-yard touchdown run for Tony Dorsett. The Cowboys' all-time leading rusher propelled the team into the 80s, a decade fiddled with the promise as those passed. The team has grown by the leap of one great star past another. But for a quarter century, there have been two fixed stars in this galaxy. Hex Ram has guided the Cowboys from the front office since their infancy. He has acquired the franchise players who grew from boys into men, and now man the ring of honor at Texas Stadium. The man who turned the men into champions is Tom Landry. His face is a glacier, and his body language is a mere whisper compared with most coaches. Yet what screamed out loudly from the beginning was an inventive mind, and for 25 years, Tom Landry's equations have equaled victories. As the seasons passed, he grew as a man and as a coach, becoming the second winningest coach in NFL history. Now at age 60, Thomas Wade Landry is the master of all he surveys. conquered many opponents and remained masters of the game in the 1980s. The decade so far has proved to be a bittersweet one. For four years, they reached the playoffs only to see crushing defeats deny them a chance for another Super Bowl championship. But along with the sour was the sweet. Moment. The stars have shone on the Dallas Cowboys for 25 years, illuminating a common bond that has produced a lasting record of achievement. 
17 consecutive winning seasons. A playoff berth 17 of the past 18 years. An NFL record nine straight playoff appearances. But the joy is not in what has been, but what is going to be. In this silver season, new ownership headed by H.R. Bum Bright and Tex Schramm brim with plans for the future, more ambitious than ever. Plans that will continue to drive the Dallas Cowboys to shoot for the stars.